lab guy here. This is potentially my next project. This is the RCA CRV 59 AAE iconoscope camera designed in 1944 and 1945 to be installed in a flying bomb. These are uh, colloquially known among collectors as RCA bomb cams. This one is in excellent condition and uh, the fellow I purchased it from in 2006 claimed that he was using it the year before to watch his child in the backyard. So we'll find out very soon uh, as I intend to restore this camera and try it out. It's currently sitting on top of the home built power supply and according to the documentation that I have the power supply was constructed in 1953. This camera was actually purchased from Harjo which was the company that sold these to uh, ham radios uh, operators and other experimenters after World War II. The outer can of the camera comes off easily enough. You just unlock these sliding tabs on the back and pull and pull it off. Revealing the uh, internal architecture of a 1945 television camera. Right here is the bulb of the iconoscope tube sitting behind the lens. The lens can be moved in and out in and out to focus it and an image is projected by the lens into the tube onto a target. What we don't see right now is the electron gun of the tube projects down this way at an angle and contains a deflection yoke generates the beam that scans the target in the tube. Moving to the bottom of the camera we can see the deflection yoke and the neck of the tube protruding. Here's the base connector where the connections are made to the electron gun which proceeds up this way. All of the circuitry of this era is hand wired point to point from the tube sockets to terminal strips to all of the chassis mounted components which have solid connecting tabs to which to attach the wires. Here we see the connectors for the uh, for operation of this camera. In its normal designed mode, this camera worked with several other large black boxes. There was a, uh, a power supply unit and a radio transmitter and the antennas and all of the uh, cabling to go with it. And the uh, power supply attached to the camera through this large six pin connector. And the transmitter or monitor was attached to this connector which sent video in sync. Um, and then again the video and the sync outputs are separate. I believe the sync was sent separately to the transmitter so that it could be adjusted uh, its amplitude could be adjusted separately to uh, to uh, stretch the sync because of the uh, low power and the range. There are also a large number of adjustments unnecessary on this camera because the circuitry is extremely simple for the job this camera had to perform. And here you see a field, a large field of adjusters that set all kinds of uh, 
set all kinds of parameters. Horizontal parabola, for instance, refers to a shading correction. Vertical parabola, the uh, iconoscope tube doesn't sense light evenly across its surface, and these correct for that to make the uh, field, the brightness field flat. I don't even know what ST is. <laughs> Here's the focus control, vertical line, I have no idea, video gain, bias adjustment, horizontal centering, vertical centering, and so on. And so there was usually a, 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 an alignment procedure for setting all of this correctly and in the correct order. The CRV59-AAE RCA bomb cam contains many, many vacuum tubes. Uh, we can see a few of them down in here. And uh, there are also many adjustments. Um, the circuitry in this is not as stable as one would build for broadcast since the operational lifespan of the device was probably measurable in minutes. There was a heater for the tube to uh, defrost the tube because the airplane could get very cold inside. So there you have it. The RCA CRV 59 AAE flying bomb camera from 1945. These enjoyed an operational life more in the hands of ham radio operators television experimenters, and even some low-power television stations in the very beginning of the TV industry following World War II, the RCA flying bomb camera.